We are joined by Jasiri X. He is the president of an organization called Leading Young Rappers in Career Success, Lyrics, Inc., and a founding member of One Hood, an organization of men working against violence in the African-American community. He is a Pittsburgh hip-hop artist who became nationally known in 2007 with the song Free the Genesis. 6. Uh, that song was named the 2007 Hip-Hop Political Song of the Year and was instrumental in galvanizing the community and supporting the youth unlawfully incarcerated in that instance. Well, f- welcome, Jasiri X. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, I'm honored to be on it. Tell me what your initial reaction to the verdict was. Uh, my initial reaction was actually no feelings. I, I didn't expect a uh, guilty verdict. Uh, I, I mean, um, for me, um, after watching uh, Officer Johannes Meserly, who shot and killed uh, Oscar Grant on videotape, um, get 11 months, you know, less time than uh, Plexico Burr's got for shooting himself in the leg. After I saw that, I lost complete faith in the justice system. And so I was pretty much prepared for a not guilty verdict. Uh, what, what hurt me was I was actually at a um, a conference with 100 uh, black leaders from all around the country. So to see, especially the, the younger ones there, those, I mean, we had people there as young as 18. I mean, they were in tears. They were heartbroken. And so that, that to me, it hurt more, not the verdict, but just to see them uh, heartbroken because, you know, they, they lost faith in the system, you know, like I did, you know, just a few years ago. And and that's interesting, right? Because we do have this legacy and this long and deep history uh, in this country that suggests that, as our uh, previous guest on another segment said, that the actual courthouse uh, that the trial was held in was built on uh, racial privilege uh, and that the system itself is racially biased. And we know that as African-Americans. So why do you think people were crying? Well, I think that, you know, it was hope. I mean, this is kind of what, you know, President Obama's election represented, especially to the young community, that, like, things are changing and it's a possibility that we're going into this post-racial uh, dynamic or space. And so I think that they had, and they had never really, you know, some of the younger ones, you know, you don't have or maybe not have as strong a connection to that history of, you know, whether it was Emmett Till or even, you know, uh, going back to something like Rodney King. You know, uh, I run a youth program we have a, a, a media academy for uh, black men ages 14 and 19, and 90 percent of them didn't know about Rodney King or the L.A. Rebellion. Um, and so I think that they just assumed, like, it was a cut and dry case. Like, hey, this guy stalked and shot and killed an unarmed uh, child that obviously it was going to have to be some justice. And to see him walk away with, you know, not guilty and to the point where, you know, they were ready to give him his gun back. I bet that shook a lot of people who, who thought, like, wow, we thought America had changed and we had maybe turned a corner, only to realize that, no, nah, it hasn't changed and we right back where we've always been. You know, Eugene Robinson of the Washington Post actually wrote an article in which he said that uh, African American men uh, do not have the right to be boys. Uh, he said mm-hmm. that uh, those jurors knew that Martin, at the time of his death, was just three weeks past his 17th birthday. But he says, quote, black boys in this country are not allowed to be children. They are assumed to be men and to be full of menace. Your reaction? I, I, I agree 100 percent. I mean, I, I remember um, somebody sharing a, a study with me that said police officers, um, they actually studied how police officers respond um, uh, on, the, on the basis of race, and they say when police officers see black uh, boys, they always see them older. They see them as older and grown. I mean, we saw that when you when you looked at George Zimmerman's own history of 9-11, uh, 9-1-1 calls that was specifically around black boys. He had called 9-1-1 on, I think, a nine-year-old. So, I mean, that's unfortunately, um, I mean, we've seen, you know, there's footage of children um, as young as five and six uh, children of color being arrested and handcuffed in school. Schools now are a are, are, are school to prison pipeline. You know, mm-hmm. really preparing young people, you know, from, from, from detention to suspension. Now you get arrested in school, there's judges in school, schools like jail, and then they send you right on to the juvenile facility and eventually to prison. So that's unfortunately, you know, our, um, you know, our, our, our circumstance, our life here as, as young uh, people of color in America. 
And what's interesting even about that is that it's ironic that that is the case that we before, and yet they're calling for uh, the um, the robocops that are in schools to actually become more armed. They're even calling for teachers to become armed, and I see that as a disaster waiting to happen with regards and, and, to... And the deep part is that there's been several cases. I just recently read a study about a school in Philadelphia that was in one of the worst communities in Philadelphia. And what the school did, the first thing that they did was they said, okay, we're not, we're going to fire the security guards, we're going to take away the metal detectors, we're going to take the bars off the window, and we're going to focus on treating these uh, children like what they are, children. And that school saw a 90% reduction in um, violence in that school. There was a school in Boston wow. where they did the same thing, a K-8 school that was considered one of the worst schools in Boston. They fired the security guards. They invested in arts programs, children putting arts on the wall. They transformed that school into one time what was considered one of the worst to a destination school in that community. And so we see it, but that's the problem. We keep thinking that we have to somehow police um, our children. We have to somehow, you know, we want to lock them up at 16 and 15 and put them in prison with adults instead of instead of allowing them to make mistakes like all children do. And that's what when President Obama was saying, you know, 35 years ago, that could have been me. You're absolutely right. And what we have to see from President Obama is policies that allow for children to be children and that we not be criminalized and we not fall victim to this system. So you felt positively about the the president's remarks, are you? Well, I, I, mm-hmm. I always I always like hearing him speak. He always he's always very sincere. He always connects to me. The problem is we don't see the policies. Right. The problem is we still have a war on drugs, and we don't see Obama um, pushing the, uh, uh, the 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 brakes or pulling putting the brakes on the war on drugs. So we still have you know a, a society in which you know. You can't talk about racial profiling and then you're saying that there's a possibility that the NYPD commissioner, Ray Kelly, might be the head of Homeland Security. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. So you have been an activist. Do you feel the fire? Do you think that this is a catalyst to uh, re-engage a younger generation in the ongoing struggle for civil rights in this country? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, you know, people have literally been on the streets every day yeah. since the verdict was read. And, and, you know, yet, you know, I participated in a rally uh, here in Pittsburgh that was, you know, probably the biggest rally I can remember um, in Pittsburgh in front of the federal building, along with hundreds of other cities uh, that participated in these rallies. And so, and, and like I said, I was at a, um, a conference with a hundred other uh, young black um, um, leaders and activists from across the country. And one of the things that happened after that verdict was read is after that initial shot and emotion, we got to work and began to organize. Um, and, uh, and, and and we, you know, called ourselves the BYP 100 uh, because this uh, conference was sponsored by the Black Youth Project. Mm-hmm. And so we've been we've been communicating. We've broken up into teams and we've been organizing ever since the verdict was read, along with young activists like the Dream Defenders who have taken over uh, the, the State House in Florida and, 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 and won't leave until, you know, uh, we get some justice. And, and, and they're pushing the Trayvon Martin Act where they're dealing with the school to prison pipeline and dealing with staying your ground and dealing with a racial profiling provision. So I absolutely see young people not only involved but in the leadership position um, in, in what's happening right now in our community. Shout out to the Dream Defenders. That's leadership. That's real leadership. Jasiri X, you are a hip-hop artist. And so I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to perform. What you got for me? Oh wow! Well, <laughs> you know we don't have any uh, any uh, any of my songs on on video, huh? Well, I mean, oh, I, oh, no, I mean, I'm sorry, oh, the audio of the songs. But um, I'll say this: um, this is a song that I just recently wrote. It's funny, it's, so this is an exclusive. All right. All right. Ready for it. So I said, only white life is protected in America. Every black life is rejected to they bury A thousand blacks killed is suspected to more than marry her. One white child gets murdered is mass hysteria. Two white kids killed, that's way beyond the limits. Three white kids killed, now that's a damn epidemic. The president on TV crying and looking to talk. 500 blacks die, we don't even expect them to show up. And so part of what we got to do, is, and one of the things that has come out of this is make sure that we understand that our lives are as valuable and precious as anyone else's and that we can't accept violence from inside our community or outside of our community. Just Siri X, that was excellent. I I do have to agree with you that we can't accept violence, that our lives are absolutely just as valuable 
But I got to ask you this, since you are a hip-hop artist, and that is uh, the use of the term N-I-G-G-E-R uh, yep. in lyrics. Uh, can we expect uh, that, uh, that we can use it and not expect others to use it when it's a denigrating term that actually undermines our, our notion of equality in America? Uh, no, no, we can, and, and more, more than that. I, I would say even, even as um, you know, not not only that term, but to me, you know, the corporations that push this mainstream hip hop. That oftentimes right. um, you only see us being criminalized, dehumanized, are complicit. And artists that you know are oftentimes very intelligent, very savvy, and very wise, but continue to only display us in an image that paints us as criminals, as thugs, they're, they're complicit in what happened to Trayvon and the other Trayvons that's happening all over the country. So we've actually become discussions as hip-hop artists. I was just on a call the other day with hip-hop artists from all over the country about we have to absolutely take responsibility and change the culture because we can't criminalize ourselves and then wonder why somebody else is afraid of us. And so we are taking responsibility uh, for hip hop. But also what we have to do is put pressure on these corporations that will tell an artist like me, oh, no, we can't give you a budget to Siri X uh, because you're, you're conscious and you're intelligent. We're going to put millions of dollars behind artists that only uh, 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 dehumanize us and criminalize us. So we have to hold these corporations accountable and we have to hold one another accountable. Boom. There you have it. I think that you have now just replaced uh, Loopy Fiasco in my uh, eyes as my favorite <laughs> hip hop artist. This is Jasiri X Law, y'all. And, and thank you for joining me. I really appreciate your insight and your wisdom. Thank you. And I would say, just to, to let everybody know, they can go to blackyouthproject.com. You can watch 100 black activists responding um, to the George Zimmerman verdict and what we're doing now. So thank you. Thank you, Jasiri X. And thanks to my listening audience for joining me for yet another edition of Pivot Point with Maya Rocky Moore, sponsored by the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare. A special shout out to my production team of Peter James Callahan and Melissa Byrne. Finally, don't forget to join me. We will be shifting to Thursdays at 10 a.m. Thursdays at 10 a.m. right here on WeActRadio.com or 1480 a.m. in the Washington, D.C. area. Until next time, America.